As much as I love gaming on an ultra sharp professional CRT monitor, I'm also a big advocate for consumer TVs. Manufacturers of pro monitors would often list their specifications as a selling point, including TV lines. After all, a bulk of what was paid for these sets were in their superior horizontal resolution. But consumer TVs rarely advertise their TV lines. So unless you want to count them yourself or try using a test pattern, you'd be relying on a broad estimate. But I've come up with an unorthodox, yet fairly reproducible method to approximate the TV line count on pretty much any set. And all you need is a way to play Mario on the NES and your camera phone. So first of all, I'll discuss what TV lines are, how they're measured and why they matter. TV lines were an industry standard to grade a monitor or camera's horizontal resolution. Let's not get this mixed up with scan rate or horizontal frequency, which is the amount of times in a second the CRT's raster sweeps from left to right to create a complete scan line. I recommend you check out the Slow Mo Guys video on TVs for a visual explanation. TV lines on the other hand are a fixed number. Well, kind of, depending if the monitor does 16x9, but I'll address that later. TV lines are measured within the width of the CRT that's equal to its visible height, counting the number of lines on either side of the center of the tube. Black and white displays, which had no mask or grill, would sum the collective black and white lines. So a 400 line set had 200 black and 200 white lines. Whereas for a color TV, white is produced by firing all three red, green and blue guns simultaneously. And either the definition is changed for color sets or I've missed something in my research, but color sets with 400 TV lines should have 400 each of red, green and blue phosphors. Things can get even more confusing when you bring into the mix the resolution of the source device, like a game console or a VCR. If we say the Nintendo Entertainment System's typical video resolution is 256 by 240, which is 240p, it's the density of the TV lines that helps to delineate the horizontal image. Resolution is the ability to resolve two adjacent structures between one another. So if you have a low TV line monitor, there's much less to work with to draw smaller objects. On a consumer Sony Trinitron with no formal number of TV lines, Mario's ear is drawn horizontally in just three red and green lines. But a PVM14L5 with 800 TV lines produces a cleaner picture and more defined edges, using eight red and green phosphors to draw Mario's ear instead. Both are RGB and they have the same screen size, just more densely packed phosphors on the PVM. Just think of filling a cup full of flour. That's the consumer CRT. Then compact the contents to jam in more volume into the same space. Now that's the PVM. Measuring only the lines inside the width that's equal to the visible height makes TV lines somewhat comparable against other brands. But every now and then some brands go against the industry standard and count the total horizontal lines across the entire width of the CRT, including the overscan behind the bezel. I'm looking at you, JVC. Naughty, naughty. The 1956 EIA resolution chart can be used to approximate the screen's TV lines, which Phonedork covered in his BVM D24 video. Basically, you display this pattern on your monitor and scroll your eyes down the four columns until the vertical lines are no longer distinguishable to each other. I am skeptical about this method because we have to assume that the image displays in full 640x480 and that the device sending the image doesn't scale it horizontally and therefore stretch the image. I found the test pattern online to try this out myself on the PVM 14L5 with 800 TV lines and on my consumer TV with an unknown number of TV lines. But I don't think I could trust my eyes to tap out when the lines fully merged. In the video featuring the Sony Trinitron switchless no cut RGB mod, I used an approximation of the Mario's ear analogy to estimate the line count on the consumer TV by using the lines in Mario's hat instead. Basically, I knew the line count on the 14 inch PVM was 800, but didn't know how many it was on the TV VCR combo. So by counting a row of lines in Mario's hat on both sets, 
I divided the lines to get a ratio to say that the TV had 49% of the lines compared to the PVM and 49% of 800 lines approximated the consumer set to have 390 TV lines. Building on this idea, I figured I could come up with a more universal and hopefully reliable method to estimate TV lines. Super Mario Bros. on the NES is one of, if not the most popular games in history. With today's accessibility to play retro games on original hardware, FPGA and accurate emulation, this seemed like the perfect game to work with. So here's the theory. I need to find a horizontal structure to count a segment of lines that's not too short that it invalidates the method, and not too long that you might as well just count all the TV lines yourself. And we need to count against a black background to see the illuminated phosphors, which can be found by going down Mario's first war pipe. I studied all the elements up close to find the most easily resolved sprite that also had enough horizontal lines to make this method simple and hopefully accurate. From head to toe, nothing about Mario was ideal, with too few lines and different coloured phosphors bleeding into each other. The blue and green phosphors on each brick were difficult to resolve when they're so close side by side. So what I needed was a linear structure that only drew sprites with one solid colour. And I found exactly that in the top row of the corner pipe. If we zoom in, you can see that the first horizontal line is only made up of green phosphors. So going back to the PVM 14L5, if I count the number of phosphors in the top row and divide the 800 TV lines by that number, I should theoretically be able to use the ratio to multiply against the number of green pipelines in another TV. And the ratio I got was 12.9. But there's two major things wrong with this. The first is that the advertised TV lines were always a roundabout figure. Sometimes the tube came off the conveyor belt with more or sometimes less TV lines. And the second issue is that this ratio is only using one CRT. If I wanted to come up with a more universal ratio that anyone can multiply their number of pipelines to, I had to measure multiple CRTs at different sizes, consumer and pro, Shadow Mask and Aperture Grill. And I'm hopeful that this results in an average universal ratio to use the pipeline method to approximate TV lines on any tube. So in the name of science, I needed to painstakingly measure TV lines the old fashioned way on every CRT in my sample to get their exact number. I manually calculated TV lines by measuring horizontally to find the center of the screen. Using the PS1's 240p test suite convergence pattern, I stuck some masking tape just beneath the horizontal line and towards the center of the screen. I marked the approximate center and then measured the height of the visible screen. The fastest way to manually measure one's heart rate is to count the number of beats in 15 seconds and multiply that by 4. By applying this to the CRT, I halved the height measurement to just count the lines in half of the screen and then double the result. I found the phosphors much easier to count with the brightness turned all the way down to avoid blooming. I marked a line onto some clear tape and stuck it onto a jeweler's loop to help scan across the face of the tube. And the PS1 convergence test pattern can display red, green or blue grids. So I chose a color and started counting. And the actual 14L5 line count was pretty bang on 800. I started an Excel spreadsheet to add the tube model, CRT size, number of pipelines, and actual TV line count, and then calculated the TV line to pipeline ratio. One by one, I pulled out more CRTs for a Marco Retro family reunion. Atari, still using VGA? Oh, you old dog. 9L3, you breaking out those BNCs? Combo, hey, did you ever get that tape out? Oh, that must have hurt. This was a necessary, but tedious process if I wanted to properly validate this formula. So concentration, patience and discipline were my mantra when counting all of those tiny little phosphors. God damn it. After counting the TV lines with brightness turned down, I put it back up to normal and then counted the pipelines for the spreadsheet. The Atari 900 with a Hitachi tube, 400 TV lines. The PVM 9L3, dead on the advertised 450 lines. And that Sony VCR combo, 
a little less than I initially estimated at 320 TV lines. To make sure this was going to be a universal method for anyone to try, I tested different hardware to see if the pipelines were consistently drawn. The Sony VCR combo drew the top row of the pipe with 26 green lines on the AV Famicom using the NTSC ROM. And using a PAL NES, Mr. FPGA, and NES emulation on a Raspberry Pi, and a Nintendo Wii using the Mednafen emulator that outputs Double Strike 240p, the number of green phosphors remained exactly the same at 26. And while RGB should give you less color bleed, composite video on original hardware produced the same results. The only confounder was if horizontal width wasn't optimized because this can essentially stretch or shrink the pipe using more or less phosphors. So just make sure the video appropriately fills the entire screen without too much overscan. I moved on to measuring my advertised 250 TV line PVMs and counted 230 lines on the 8041QM. The PVM 6041QM, also known as the 5041, should also have 250 TV lines. And being a smaller screen, I expected to see more phosphors making up the top row of the green pipe. But to my surprise, they were less than the 9 inch monitor. So when I manually calculated the 6041s, I only got 200. Man, Sony owes me some TV lines. I moved on to my widescreen Grundig, which I counted 456 TV lines in 4x3. So the thing with widescreen CRTs is the number of TV lines are the same when in 4x3 and 16x9. This is because of the way lines are counted, because remember, they're the lines at the horizontal width that's equal to the height of the CRT. So when you switch from 4x3 to 16x9 full screen, the height never changes and therefore neither do the TV lines. However, on a 4x3 PVM with a 16x9 mode, the height of the screen reduces and therefore lines are counted in a smaller width, therefore reducing the TV lines in 16x9. Which is why the widescreen BVM D24 has 1000 TV lines in both 4x3 and 16x9, whereas the BVM A20F1 drops the 900 TV lines down to 700 when in 16x9 mode. My friends happily let me count their sets to increase my sample, which gave me a chance to measure the TV lines on the highly reputable German brand, L Lo Ewi. <laughs> Idiot! Es wird Löwe ausgesprochen! Alright, alright, sorry, Löwe! The 68cm Löwe Planus with the E3000 chassis and Philips ESF tube are the perfect combination for this to be one of the best consumer TVs ever made. Its convergence and focus are some of the best that I've seen, and the TV line count was exactly 500. I measured another ESF tube and this time it was using a Grundig chassis inside of an arcade cab, which came to 510. I guess I was expecting higher, but it just goes to show that TV lines aren't the only determinant of sharpness. The 51cm Lerva Kalita, also with an E3000 chassis, had 445 TV lines and a freshly RGB modded Sony with a BG1S chassis and an M68 tube had 525 TV lines. With 15 tubes in my sample, at varying size, brands and mask type, the average TV lines divided by Mario's pipelines gave a ratio of 12.5. And with not too many outliers, the standard deviation was 0.3. So now that I've shown my workings, I'll show step by step how to easily estimate and the keyword here is estimate the TV lines on any CRT. Make sure the TV isn't terribly underscanned or overscanned and just have the brightness somewhere neutral. Fire up Super Mario Brothers on the NES by any means that you have, composite or RGB, and travel down the first warp pipe and pull up the camera on your phone. I find that it'll focus better if you hold the phone a little further from the screen and then digitally zoom in. Focus on the pipe in the bottom right to snap a picture of the top row, which should only have green phosphors. And then count the green lines. Once you have that number, multiply it by 12 and a half. 
On the Atari 900 RGB monitor, there's 33 pipelines, multiplied by 12.5 and we get 412 and a half. Then round it to the nearest factor of 50 and the TV lines for this set matches the measured lines at 400. And this time for a more unique example, just to show that it still works when outputting line doubled 480p from the Mr. FPGA to a PC CRT, a Compaq S710. With its dot mask, you'll see a set of two vertical phosphors next to a single as a zigzag pattern. Doesn't matter in the slightest, just count horizontally like so, and there's about 70 pipelines, which estimates the TV line count to 875. We're right in the middle of 850 and 900, so this would be an approximate range. The major pitfalls to consider with the pipeline method are poor focus and increased horizontal width, because all of these can inadvertently illuminate more green phosphors in Mario's pipe, and therefore overestimate the TV lines. I tried to intentionally blow out the horizontal convergence, but it had no effect given that the top row of the green pipe really only hits green phosphors. Therefore, this should still work on a misconverged set. More CRTs in the sample would have been great, but I had to draw the TV lines somewhere. And of course, TV lines aren't the be all and end all parameter that objectively determines a CRT's sharpness. There's still dot pitch, for example. I'll reiterate that this is a very novel idea that's meant to make estimating TV lines for CRT gamers, especially those with a consumer TV, much easier. If the pipeline method estimates your 600 TV line set at 500, for the thousandth time, this is just a rough estimation. If you want to count the lines yourself in the standard fashion, then by all means knock yourself out. So I fully acknowledge that this isn't without its flaws. But the pipe method still has its merits to easily estimate TV lines, especially for a consumer set. I'd be interested to read what sort of numbers everyone's getting on their TVs and monitors, so please write down in the comments if you try this out yourself, and please share with your fellow CRT enthusiasts. And at the very least, I hope that this shed some light and helped you better understand TV lines and how they come into play on CRTs. Thanks all for watching, and happy gaming.